Hello there, demographic, and welcome to Let's Play Monkey Island. Well, uh, I decided to take a break from working on my Q&A video, which is why I haven't had a video out this weekend. Um, and I've decided to play this. Uh, so I apologise I couldn't get it made in time. It's actually taken longer than I expected it to. Um, so yeah, uh, you'll have to put up with this. Uh, which I do plan on making into a multi-party uh, kind of series because uh, it's one of my favourite games of all time. Um, it's actually one of the first games I ever played. Not this version, but the original version. Um, of course, this being remade uh, a couple of years ago now. Um, but yeah, it was probably either the first or second game I played. I always remember the first kind of gaming experience I ever had was on the Amiga 500. And... Uh, this was one of the games which actually came with it. And it's still, to this day, one of my favourite games I've ever played. Right, um... Have to watch through this, I'm afraid. It has some really, really iconic music to it as well. Um, this has obviously been redone. Okay, so here we are. Guybrush Threepwood. And let me tell you something. Don't get too used to seeing this. Because we are going to play it... ...like that. How I played it, originally. Uh, so yeah, I'm giving you the actual Amiga 500 experience here. It's quite brilliant, actually. You're playing as Guybrush Threepwood, a wannabe pirate. And the way you become a pirate is by talking to the pirate leaders. Just like you do for any sort of job, I suppose. Um, so I'm going to some crazy pirate interview at the Scum Bar. There we go. The Scum Bar. Okay, so I did try to record this fairly recently again. Uh, the game split up into three different parts, and I was hoping to do a video on each individual part, but the videos were coming out about an hour and a half long per part, so... So yes, we're going to play through this from beginning to end. I'll make these videos when I feel like it. Uh, again, probably it's a time filler, I have to be perfectly honest. Okay, so... I think pressing... There we go. Yeah. You've got a shortcut. Uh, it'll tell you... You'll kind of get highlights down here. and It'll tell you what the alternative action will do, which is the B button. Uh, it just helps to speed up the process. Okay. Let's talk to this pirate. Simply because these faces used to creep me out when I was a little kid. Um, I won't talk to him too much. I'll just... My name's Guybrush Threepwood. I'm new in town. That'll do. But yeah, back in its day, this was... This looked absolutely fantastic. I'm insulted. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, I'm going to talk to the dog, though. Because I like dogs. Ah. Oh. I can speak dog. I used to talk to Gypsy all the time, so I'm used to this kind of thing. There's something very quaint about the graphics in this game as well. I still enjoy them to this day. Uh, I know a lot of you are probably watching this and thinking games used to look like this, but really, it, it's... There's something very, very charming about it. Right, okay. Let's go talk to the pirate leaders who are over here. 
They are important looking pirates, unlike the less important ones in the other bar. Uh, I want to be a pirate, because that's the aim of this game. So yeah, I'm going to split this up into 20 minute chunks. One of the things I always remember from back then as well was the facial animation. Uh, for a 2D sprite, they were actually really, really good. The way the mouths move and things like that. I always used to love that. It's a very important skill, being able to hold your breath for 10 minutes. I love the presentation of it as well. I like the different coloured voices. The quest. It's good because you're actually playing this rather fun, affable character who actually wants to be this grog swilling bastard pirate, basically. Um, but as you'll probably find as I play this, you quickly get swept up into a very unpiratey mission. And I am coining that word, unpiratey. Um, let's ask about the sword. I hope I get to do a bit of sword fighting today. I don't think I will do, because if I remember right, I think the training sequence with the sword takes an awful long time. I also feel as if the voice acting might spoil my perception of this game as well that's in the remastered version. I don't know, it's kind of, I like to make my own kind of voices up in my head for how they'd sound and I'm always a little dubious that I'm going to end up being real disappointed. Right, I've asked about sword, I've asked about idol, I'll ask about treasure hunting. I wouldn't be surprised if I'll end up making an entire video on sword fighting on this game as well. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I have to get a map and I need to get a sword, a spade. So our first task is going to be getting money. Right, and how do we get money? Well, we have to wait for this cook to come out here. So I'm going to wait here. That's not exactly where I said to walk to, but oh well. Come on, cookie. Come out here. I think some of the pirates' glasses are empty. I'll show you what happens when you open the door. Hey! There we go. Yeah, so we have to wait for him to pop out of there. Any time now. I'm not speeding up this footage. If I'm waiting, you guys are waiting as well. I don't care. I could be playing an exciting first person shooter right now. Let's see if I can provoke him a little. Come on. Oh, I want to talk to the guy that's up on the top. Here he goes. And I'm going in. 
Okay, so this is going to seem out of context a little. I'm going to pick up a hunk of meat. I'm going to pick up the pot down there. And there is a fish out here I'm going to need. Bloody bird. This will show you. Go away. There we go. Right, now to find us some money. Because you can't play any video game without your character having some money. But first, a little flavour text. Again, there's something really creepy about this. I just, again, as a child, I just remember just... These images are all just ingrained in my mind. They really are. Everyone now. Oh, I don't know. I obviously don't remember it well enough. <laughs> Again, it's just one of these games which is just filled with amazing dialogue. I mean, I actually remember hearing someone say that they think this is the first really heavily driven story game that was really made. Before this, it was all things like Space Invaders and things like that. I mean, I know there were other point-and-click adventure games, but I don't know whether they necessarily had such an involved story as this. <laughs> A young, inexperienced pirate is going to cause them problems. Just something about these ghost pirates really troubled by this one little lad. And the ghost pirate himself is deciding to go out and try to stop him. But then... What would an exciting story be without a villain chasing our dumbfounded hero? Who right now all he's interested in is becoming a pirate. That's all. Okay, so we are off to the map. And where you want to head to next is just this little clearing over here. This is, I think you can't go to it after you've been here this first time. So, uh, take it in. Because you probably will never be seeing this place again because it outlives its usefulness after this scene. Because, of course, where else would be. What else would you put on a pirate infested island than a circus? Okay, this goes on for a little while. You see, usually when you get to this bit, if you haven't picked up that pot, there comes a stopping point. Okay. Um... Again, I'll just... Oh, God. It's nice to be playing a game for a change where I'm not killing stuff as well. I can just enjoy the dialogue. Nice and easy. I mean, I've played a lot of stuff, but I can't actually remember playing a game where I didn't kill stuff. Even the things like where I've played Rayman for you guys and stuff like that. You were killing stuff in that. I suppose, um... Uh, Dark Dreams Don't Die. I'm not sure whether it will, that will change, however. Um, let's ask, how much will they pay me? It's a very specific number. 
I wonder why. Oh, of course I have a helmet. Okay, so what we have to do is give them our pot. <laughs> Again, I love the creativity, actually having the echo pop off in a different location. <laughs> Again, I love the little touches in this game, the writing being upside down, down the bottom. Nothing pleases me more than a game with sense of humour to it. It's fantastic. There aren't enough of them anymore. A lot of the ones that do attempt it, games like Sunset Overdrive are just about loud, obnoxious people. And, yeah, it, it's... It's lost something. It seems like... Uh, they assume that gamer humour, that's what we want to see. We want to see a load of loud, obnoxious people just shouting their way through, through the game. Okay, so we have money. That's good. Let's see if we can get to town and buy a few things. And start to get a sense of what that amount we got paid was for. Okay. That red herring looks suspicious as well, that I picked up earlier. Okay, so this guy here... What's he got to say? I don't feel as if you really need me talking over this video. I think it's entertaining enough as it is. So if I go quiet for a long time, it is actually because I'm taking all this in as well. Because it's just so well written. It really is. And it's a shame we don't have more games like this. Um, I'll take it. Let's have a look at our map. <laughs> okay, so a puzzle. A puzzle I'm probably not going to get time to explore today. Not on this video. But soon. I'll try and make these semi-regular. I have just realised there's been more games with gold, just to keep you updated to uh, as to uh, the site and stuff. Okay, um, chicken. I think I could make use of that in a rather obscure way later. You see, it's <laughs> it's kind of strange to be able to call the pot being put on the head as a as a puzzle, really. Oh, someone's becking us into this alley over here. Let's see what they want. Well, that's rather threatening.
Could this be a villain of some sort? <laughs> I love the naivety. I'm a mighty pirate. <laughs> Again, all the names in this are just marvellous. I mean, like, LeChuck, the Dread Pirate, Fester Shine Top, Guybrush Threepwood. I just, oh, I would have loved to have been in the, those meetings where they were coming up with names for all these characters. <laughs> I love that naivety as well. The guys just come up and threatened you and you're saying it's nice to know there's law enforcement within this town. Okay. Right, what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and I'll get as far as buying the, some stuff. Ahoy there, fancy pants. Someone is an Evil Dead fan. Um, right, we need to pick up a sword. And we need to pick up a shovel. There we go. So I'll get finished with this. I'll end up just buying these things. And then I'll probably call it a day for this video. I want it. I sure do. I also want a shovel. I'm essentially building a do-it-yourself pirate kit. I already have a map. So hey, a shovel almost costs as much as the sword. Tell that to someone down at the uh, local DIY store. Okay. Okay, so that's it for Monkey Island for the time being. That's where I'm going to wrap up part one. So, uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, please feel free to leave a comment or a like if you've enjoyed the video. I will be making more of these over time. So, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. See you soon.